Nate Wars. Okay, uh, so tonight we are going to, um, I think, go over the Hian Kata because uh, it's something that we haven't done for a very long time. Well, certainly when I say we, I mean me. So let's see if I can remember the difference between Hian Yondan and Hian Goro. Well, Rue's here to help. Oops. Okay, so we're just going to go part by part each kata, and like, we're, going to, we're going to spend about 10 minutes or so on each kata, maybe a less, uh, but just about the important points, yeah? Well, we'll start with Hian Shou. So, within your space, and you can all kind of fidget it out, of course. Okay, nice relax, Hian Shou, right the way through, by count. Okay, you are in, hitch, knee, san, shi, go, rock, Shit! Hot core! Ah, jaw! Itch! Knee! Sun! She! Go! Rock! Yeah! Hot! Core! Jaw! Itch! Hey, Hummy! Ah, relax. That's it. Good. Okay, so. Like, we're not going to go over and over with the kata, um, especially because A, you all know it, and B, the space involved. But, um, okay guys, just a, a couple of things. I want to kind of practice, practice a few points. Let's just start with that tetsu. So, guys, from this, from this good arm right position, all I wish to do is practice uh, this tetsu. Okay, a couple of times, let me see what you're doing, yeah? Just a couple of times, nice relax, to tetsu, then back to good arm right. Okay, off you go, guys. Okay. Okay, so obviously obviously there's a couple of ways that you can do this. So like you know it's always nice to be able to do any way that you 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 know you're asked to do. So it's always nice to be able to kind of uh, kind of mix and match and, and, and change your karate, yeah? but ultimately try to work with your body. So so you're in hamni, then like just just try this way first, because I think this way really helps you kind of make that connection. So so from here rather than pulling away. Try to inner thigh muscle squeeze and chest squeeze. So you're coming into kind of shoulder, so sort of like coming back to kind of almost shizen type position. But those inner thigh muscles really squeeze and pec squeeze as it comes around, and then you seamlessly move towards that tetsuri. So, so connect it with the hip movement, total hip movement. So hip movement from hand knee, shoulder hand. Try to keep the same height, try to sink into that back leg, squeeze that inner thigh muscle briefly, and then drive forward again. So you have that kind of Maximum compression, maximum expansion. Maximum, maximum fear, yeah? Okay, give that a go, guys, try. Back straight, uh, just need a tailbone tucked in. Connect it, connect it, guys. Connect it with that back leg. Just work on the tetsu, yeah? Like Patricia, you're doing Giramurai, Tetsui, Oizuki. Yeah, you can do that, but we're, we're, I'm trying to teach you a very specific point. So it's probably worth practicing that specific point, yeah? Connect it with your back leg, guys. Don't just, don't just drop forward, yeah? This is, this is about kind of connecting that Tetsui to the drive of that leg. So you've got to sink in, you've got to squeeze, in a time also squeeze, and then connect it with that leg and the hip to drive in. And try to get that downward action combined with the forward action of your body to produce Tetsui, yeah? Try to kind of connect those two elements rather than just dropping in, which are, yeah, as some of you are doing, yeah? Then Linda, don't hold that showman, yeah? Don't, don't hold the showman. Don't hold this point. Sure, sure, this is the midway point, but it is one point within that whole spectrum of movement. So, so just briefly back then forward straight away, yeah? Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. If you've got any questions, of course, ask. Head up, Matthew, back straight. Okay, okay, yeah, mate, good, just watch. Then, uh, Leo, you're doing it, but you're not the only one. So, like, generally speaking, generally speaking, uh, you know, like this whole, the old application, someone grabs your wrist, and you pull away, and then you hit them on the head. And actually, it's quite a nice application, you know, it is quite nice. Uh, but, like, that, that's kind of ingrained 
whether it be, you know, like that's what you're thinking about, or whether you were taught it, that's what your instructor was thinking about, which is probably a little bit more likely, where you have this sense of, of closing your chest, pulling away, and pulling this way to kind of break that grip. Yeah, yeah, it's nice, it's nice. Uh, and, and for sure that can, uh, oh, uh, it's for sure that can kind of, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of inform what you're doing, but if then always you go this way, rather than going into, in, into your, your hand, into your hand to produce that compression. You've got to be able to do both. And if you can't switch from one to the other, then you should try to kind of focus on, on the one that you can't do. You understand? Yep, yeah? good. Okay, okay, good. Next one, guys, next one. Uh, I want you to, uh, okay, the, the stop. Let's just practice the stop. Okay, so depending on space you've got, let's start from this point, yeah? I want you to go 45 degrees, and then round stop, then 45 degrees. Then you can come round, stop, and then 45 degrees, yeah? Okay, just practice that. Well, I mean, like, it's the same as Hian Nidan, and actually quite a few kata, but just get that movement, right? Of course, depending on your space. Abigail, sit down in your stance. I'm watching you. Then Carl, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of an opening an opening before you prepare, yeah? Direct, direct. That hand never leaves your chest. And get your tailbone tucked in, man. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Just, just watch. Uh, let me... I'll try to... Yeah, everybody... You can all see my feet from there, right? Okay, so, guys, like, I'm going to step 45 degrees, right? I want you to... Like, I'm going to focus on the, the 45 degrees first, then we'll focus on the turn. But I really want you to... A couple of things. Inner thigh muscle squeeze, chest squeeze. So you get this compression, this strong compression on the initiation of the movement. And then what you're doing is you're creating kind of like a very small kind of uh, kind of place for your body, your sense to go through. You're trying to squeeze it through, like you know, when you get a hose pipe, and like you squeeze the end of the hose pipe, it increases the the kind of the power of the of the water coming out. You're kind of squeezing yourself through that kind of very narrow uh, margin of movement, right? So inner thigh muscle squeeze, which produces that that foot move which faces the direction you're going. Tailbone tucked in, both in the thigh muscle squeeze, pec squeeze as you prepare for that shoot up. And then just get tighter and tighter and tighter as you transition through that movement until eventually you release. So from this point, you squeeze, you go through that point, and at that point, then you release for the shoot up. You understand? Show that with your front foot as you rotate in. Give it a go guys, couple of minutes. Any questions? Just ask. Uh, Roger, sink more into that leading leg. You too, Jin, sink more into that leg. Don't underestimate the amount that you squeeze into that front leg. But only briefly, like I'm showing you that point, but you've got to keep it brief, yeah? You just move through it, you're constantly moving. Don't hold a point. Pallavi, get your camera on. <laughs> Too late, Pallavi, I'm not looking now. <laughs> okay, good, great, great. So, so guys, like, you know, if you have that kind of sense of, you know, you're kind of going through kind of a, like the hydraulic where you kind of like the thumb on the on the hose type thing and it squirts out more water. It gets squirts out the same amount of water, but faster, yeah? Like you force yourself through that kind of narrow, narrow space and then you expand into your position. So that's the kind of idea that you should have, yeah? Once you, once you kind of step in 45 degrees, I'll show you from this angle, you, you know, you close that off, but like I, I hold that space just to show you, but really I'm moving through that space, I'm moving through it. It's getting tighter and tighter, elbow to elbow, knee to knee, until I hit that point and then I release for the shoot off. Try to create that every single time. Okay. Understand? Okay, second point, like I'm watching, because like obviously you're doing the turn as well. There's an awful lot of people who are, Breaking the line in order to turn. So you step in the 45 degrees, then you're breaking this line to turn. Okay, I want you to be super careful. As much as you've just squeezed through that space to get 45 degrees, do the same in reverse. So inner thigh muscles together, knees together, elbows together, elbows together, elbows together, then release. 
Knee and elbow together, then same. Knee and elbow together. Get that space round, then release. So you don't ever break that line. Kind of Tommy Sensei is on the, on the training tonight. So Justin, for him, you elbows kiss. No, not like this Tommy Sensei, like this. Elbows kiss and knees kiss. So you're hitting that point, that middle point. Elbows kissing, knees kissing, and then from that contracted point, boom, you're gonna release for the shoot off. Okay, try on the 10 as well. Then Richard, uh, don't come up. Looks like your, your energy's coming up. No, down. Sink into your stance, sink into your center. Without bending, of course. Then Martin, try not to stop though on that turn. One fluid, smooth action. Okay, not the 45s, but the back turn. Dave, you too, you're releasing your back, you're, you're sticking your hip out. More way back, Jim. Yeah, that's it, Jim. Yeah. But then, Jim, your front leg a little bit more bent. Ah, uh, Jim, you're, Jim, you're, you're kind of breaking your line slightly. Yeah, keep that core engaged right the way through that movement. Yeah, you're breaking your line a little bit on the, on the turn round. Gaggy, too much. Don't, don't over rotate and then you, then you're having to turn back. Just enough, just enough. Yeah, in order to get that hip round and then drive in. Yeah. Okay, last 30 seconds, then we're moving on. Okay, okay, yummy, good. Okay, look, basic hand showdown, but there's always little bits that we can work on, yeah? One thing that I, I would say as well, that we're not gonna, I don't wanna spend too long about it, because then we won't get to the other classes, but, but also another thing is, when you're stepping forward, I would, like, um, I, I, I didn't see you guys because I wasn't watching, but I've seen it a lot. You release that shoulder a little bit too, people release that uh, shoulder a little bit too early. So, same thing for, uh, for the Oizuki as the Aguke. As you're stepping forward, resist that temptation for the shoulder to come forward. You're doing the arm forward. Like, keep it back a little bit. The more you keep it back, the more that Oizuki or that Aguke is going to be catapulted forward, yeah? Just allow that expansion of your chest as you, as you lead into your stance, yeah? As you lead into your stance, allow the expansion of your chest in order to catapult, in order to catapult those two techniques. Understand? Good. Okay, we won't practice that. Okay. Hian Okay, oi. Okay, nice and relaxed. Okay. Yin. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Ruk. Shit, cool, jo, it, ha, ni, sa, chi, go, rock, shit, ha, cho, jo, it, ni, sa, chi, go, Guys, if you've got any questions, of course, feel free. I mean, I don't expect you to be asking any questions about the sequence of the kata, but anything else, please, please feel free. Okay, first one. Just the start of here, I need up. Then, okay, let me just practice this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do that for two minutes. Let me see what you're doing. Well, 30 seconds. Let me see what you're doing. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so guys, a couple of things. Then obviously, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at HDKI guys and my guys, but uh, so I'm, I'm looking to try and look at everybody. But, um, but ultimately, you know, uh, different groups will, will emphasize, uh, at best to emphasize different, um, different things, at worst insist that you do different things. Uh, but uh, you know, that's case by case. But, but um, so if, I, if, if you're not HDK and, and I'm telling you to do something or asking or suggesting that you do something that, that the organization that you're with 
insist that you don't do, then okay, so be it. D don't worry. But uh, but like just a couple of things. Firstly, try not to kind of put power into these hands. Try to put power into your stance. Try to have that driving in prep and that driving in execution of your stance to produce the power. This is where your power is. I know it's cliched, but this is where your power is. But I'm seeing a lot of people step and then kind of strong on this movement. You're looking for kind of kime that you'll never find in that technique. Find it in the driving in of the stance and just allow your, your arms to wrap around that. That's one point. Second point is, is that like difficult to tell, but I kind of get a feeling. A lot of you kind of doing this in 2D. So like, you know, if you look at my hands, they're kind of in line. When, no, this is Ag UK. So, you know, you've talked about generics, it's like one fist width away from my forehead. And this kind of goes past my sense line. So there's quite a big gap between my hands on this axis, on the axis that I'm facing. Don't have it in line. Here and yonder's the same, right? Don't have it in line, don't have it in line. So when you're stepping to the side, you can definitely see that this Ag UK is one side and this this kind of whatever you want to give it, back fist, whatever it is, is on the other side. So be careful about that, yeah? Make sure that shape is correct. Last point is that, you know, this is not one, one, two. Nor is it one, one. So you're not going one, one, two, or one, two, three. Nor are you going one, two. You're not doing either of them. It's somewhere in between. It's that half time, yeah? So it's much better to practice it in three steps, one, two, three, and then when you take the count off, you'll just do it more naturally. But don't do it in two counts. If you practice it one, two, you'll never hit that, that second note properly. You understand? Yes. And, and the more you do that, which is kind of connected point, the more you do that, the more you use your hip, make sure that back leg is anchored. You're not wobbling it. You're driving in, of course, but that back knee is solid between those two movements. Okay, if you're rotating your hips so much that it's rocking the foundation, you're rotating your hips too much. Rotate your hip enough that you can manage it on your stance. Okay? Okay, give it a go, guys, a couple of minutes. If you've got any questions, just ask. Yeah, sensei. Yes. Can you show the very first back stance again? You sure? So, so from this point, like I'm dropping, I'm not really preparing with my hands. I'm dropping in a thigh muscle squeeze, so pulls my foot slightly in, hips rotating, then I'm driving my hip out as I make this movement. And then rotating, and then rotating. Next one I do prepare, and I pull my inner thigh muscle squeeze in, and then I rotate round and back. And then do the same. Watch that. Yes. Is that two counts or, or three counts? Uh, no, no one no. So, so it's not it's not two counts, uh, but it's also not three counts. So if you do it if you do it two counts, you end up like one two, and this middle is rushed too too quick. But if you do it three counts one two three, it's too slow. So you ha it's somewhere in between, and and so maybe practice three counts and then then no count. If you practice three counts. You will always go itch me tan. But then eventually you do no count and it's and you still have that full range of motion. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Is this is this a tetsui or is it one of those semi-direct punches? Uh Sensei asked a good question. Go on, Rue Sensei, you can ask it again where everyone can hear. Come on, come on. Is this third move a tetsui or is it sort of a punch? Okay. <laughs> okay, you, you may go. Uh, so, yeah, like, so this is, this is sonoba tsuki. This is sonoba tsuki. So, so you're actually punching with your fist rather than allowing it to come around to make tetsui. Now, whether you, if you do tetsui, then, you know, so be it. But, but ultimately, this is sonoba tsuki, so a straight punch. So the, the form would be like a little bit like Kazamazuki with the hips in handling. But ultimately, um, ultimately this is in Pinan Shoran, right? Pinan Shoran, you're going one in Nekwash, two, and then this is much more straight on. And then from here, you're going to go into Shizentai, three. I'll show you from the side. Pinan, Pinan Shoran is one, 
two, three. And so you can see it's a definite punch. But because we've made, we, we're doing it in backstance, it then tends, changes the structure of how much we can rotate in, etc. And so it ends up being looking like Tetsui, but it's not. It's Sonobatsuki, straight punch. Okay? Sorry? It's not Tetsui. No, no, it's not Tetsui. It's like a Kisame, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, the, what's called Sonobatsuki, straight punch. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, from this point, you've got to get that fist in front of your elbow as quick as possible in order to punch. Okay? Oops. Okay. Okay, guys, let's move on. Ru stole my question. Thanks, Ru. Oh, sorry. Well, he has a dogey on, so he can ask the question, Pallavi. Okay. Okay, next, guys, let's move on, let's move on. Before Pallavi comes back with a quick, gooey toss. Okay, um, I just want you to practice this, um, well, let's practice the Uchuke. So, I'll show you from this angle. So, so driving in Uchuke, and then my Enigakuzu Uchuke, and then my Enigakuzuki. You can practice the, the Marotuke as well, that's fine. Okay, just that sequence, guys. Do it a couple of times, let me see what you're doing. My guy said Ford Carl. Carl's forgotten here, I need that. I'm watching Carl. More hikite Carl. Back straight Carl. You're rotating your curve in your spine a little bit too much. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, guys. So, like, just the, like, I can see people doing it. And the one point that I really want to make with this is that, like, I really want you to think about anchoring that back leg. Now, now, it depends on your flexibility, right? But let's just say that we've, we've made, uh, I'll show you from this side, because this is the kind of basic first time having. You've made Gakazuki, right? And you're gonna make Uchuke. Then, like, certainly when I was taught this, I've been taught it lots of ways, but back in the day, you know, you, you had people kind of going in and the back leg came up. You also had people come back and, and they kind of, they, they insist, oh, your leg, when you do this, your leg comes back. So, so they kind of release the hip this way, and then they pull this leg back and then they rotate. And it was kind of really kind of orchestrated movement. What I want you to do is prioritize that back leg. That back leg doesn't move. That's your anchor point. That's what you're trying to connect with that back fist. Don't think of it so much as a Uchuke, think about it as a strike. Think about it maybe blocking Ude Burai and then striking with this hand. Have that sense. And once you do that, once you do that, then this back leg connection becomes really important. Think about this re like preparation as the kind of cover, and then striking with this back backhand, driving from that back leg. If you do that, you have that strong connection, and you don't start kind of trying to orchestrate a shape. <laughs> Sorry, Ross is dis disturbing me because he's found a spider. Okay, so, so. <laughs> is he scared of spiders? Oh, he's. Look at him. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry about this. I, I tried to get the staff, but you know. Sorry, getting flashbacks to Amsterdam. Flashbacks from Amsterdam, yeah. Um, um, anyway, as I was trying to say in a professional manner, uh, from here, connect that back leg. Now, if you're, depending on how flexible you are, you might not have to move this front leg. If you're super flexible, if you're not super flexible, then, then moving that back leg to facilitate that gackle hamni is fine. But don't move the front leg. Give it a go, guys. Let me see what you're doing. No, Paul, you just, you just moved your back leg. <laughs> Paul Doherty, man. Okay. I, okay, I'm just saying, like, if Paul's doing it, probably a lot of people are doing it, yeah? Uh, look, like this first one, guys, don't do this. Don't do this and that back leg follows you. That's your anchor point. Like when I first learned here on Nidan, my hand, your hand came up like this. You stepped across, you sweeped in a block, and then you struck with this back fist. That's, that was the kata, that's how we did it. And it's been morphed over the years to a much more kind of shows kind of version, but, but ultimately that back leg is, is paramount. So now we kind of go direct, but keep, keep that back leg engaged. Don't let it follow your fist. Okay, it's your, it's your back leg that's driving your fist, not your fist that's pulling your back leg. 
Understand? Okay, I'm watching Paul. Yeah, better, better. Come on, Caitlin, I'm watching you. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is, uh, I suppose it depends on your levels, but is it alright to practice off time with the sequence, like, for example, like, 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 left foot hand, then kick, foot punch, well, kick, foot punch. Yeah. Yeah, but also then use that, use that block to strike thing. Yeah? Okay. Use that kind of block. Okay. That thing. Oops. Okay, good. Are we all good? Everyone understand? Just yep. a question. Yes, Pallavi. I now have my full dogi on. <laughs> okay. Go on then. So, um, between the first one where you go from the Shuto and Tokugachi to here, yep. you place your leg kind of, you can already have it shorter. Yeah. So movement is not required. But for the second one, to then do this and you shorten, is it better? Um, is it better shorter for the kick? No. Okay, so, so first of all, um, the, the, the first one, right, you do, you're not making a shorter stance, you're making a wider stance. So, okay, if you watch from this angle, like when I'm stepping, like it kind of looks shorter um, in, in kind of this distance, but actually it's not the length of Zeng Stach, it's just slightly wider. This is a slightly wider stance than, than normal, right? Wider, but the length two shoulders long. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just fatter kind of thing, yeah. And then from here, you're stepping forward, full my getting into a full stance, and then if need be, coming back into a shorter stance. And that's a little, that's shorter and the same width. So the first one in here, Nidan, first two chuke, your stance is slightly wider, like hangetsu feeling almost, shoulder width and a half wide and a shoulder width and a half long. Uh, whereas the second one is zenku stance two. Shorter stance. Does that make sense? Thank you. It was such a good question. Thank you. <laughs> no, the answer was good. The question was okay. Okay, let's move on, guys. Okay, yoi. Here and stand up. Okay, nice and relaxed. Okay, each. Knees up. Shi. Go. You practice these. Donk, donk. Okay, give it a go. 30 seconds. Okay, okay. Okay, Yame. So, we're not going to spend much time on this because half of you are doing it nicely and the other half are a little bit clunky. So, uh, okay, guys, let me just prepare. Prepare for a juke, prepare for a good umbrella. Feet together. Okay, then, okay, make the block itch. And then opposite preparation knee. San. Opposite preparation she. Then don't have your hands, don't have your hands forward, yeah? Proper preparation. Okay, itch. Knee, so hands back. San, hands forward. She, hands back. Go. Back, row forward, back, shake forward, back, hatch forward, back, cool forward, back, and jaw back. Okay, one count, guys, one count from here. Preparation point, out and back, itch. Knee out and back. Sam, chi, go, look, chich, hatch, cool, jaw. Okay, so some of you are doing that really nicely, some of you aren't, yeah? We're not going to spend a long on this because some of you are doing it nicely. Those who aren't, those who are finding it a little bit awkward, then I'd, 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 I'd suggest that you kind of work on this a little bit, yeah? But ultimately, like I'm seeing some people trying to use your hips. Like, if you try to rotate your hips, well, you should use your hips, but you try to use them in a rotating manner, it's not going to work, yeah? Whichever way you rotate, you add to one hand and take away from the other. 
you have, add to, you know, you do the opposite way, you add to one hand and take away the other. So, so don't, don't use your hips. Your hips are engaged, tailbone is tucked in, and the thigh muscle squeeze, but it's your chest. Your chest is squeezing and opening, squeezing open, and that produces this kind of forward action. Chest open, lats lock in, boom, it goes forward. Squeeze, boom, forward. But then you do it in this snapping manner, boom, snap forward and back, boom, snap forward and back. And you've got to have that kind of twitch, twitch, twitch. Understand? Yes. Try guys, 30 seconds, then we're going to move on. It doesn't look like there's any up and down involved, then, so is that No. Right? People will bob up and down. Uh, like, you'll see people kind of, you know, they'll go, I'll show you from this angle. You'll, from this first movement, you'll go, people go up, down, up, down. This doesn't add anything to it. You know, it's not helping. It's not public, but like they, they're desperately trying to look for some power creation and, and they're looking in all the wrong places. Look, some people look for it in that hip rotation. Some people look for it in that kind of up and down bobbing rotation, but actually it's your chest and back. It's this kind of snapping action that you're kind of creating the power. Sensei? Yes. Would you also say that the connection to the floor is on the inside, like your toes are squeezing in together, and that is also the grounding feeling? Yeah, but I'd, I'd argue that was probably true about all all stances. Yeah, you want you want your you want your weight on that line between your big toe through your instep to the inside of your heel, and your and your outer side of your foot is just resting on the floor to create that kind of uh, surface tension. But yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. Like I say, we're not going to spend forever about this. Some of you are struggling now. Some of your hands are getting mixed up and everything. You don't want to ever kind of focus on the two end points. With this, you want to practice the preparation point. So from here, this prepare back prepare. So like just whenever you practice this kata, it's not the end technique. It's this part. This squeeze out, squeeze out. That kind of feeling, yeah. Okay. Okay. Next one. Next one. Let's try. Um, Okay, let's try this from this nukite, this round tetsu. So round tetsu you try. Then you can rotate, just change round tetsu. Okay, give that a go, two minutes, uh, a couple of times, give it a go. Back straight, Nick, back straight. Just need to do that again. Do it again, this. Justina, we are not doing Kankudai, we are doing Hian Sandan. It's all right, no one else can see you putting your head down in shame, don't worry about it. No one saw you do that apart from me and Ross Sensei. You are forgiven this once. Okay, guys, okay, so uh, a couple of things I want you to try. Uh, first and foremost, from here, like, again, there's a whole host of myths and kind of things and, you know, pushing forward and, and going in and all that kind of stuff. For now, let's just focus on the, on the kind of the, the physicality of it, yeah? Uh, so, inner thigh muscle squeeze. So as you rotate in, of course, I want you to feel like your chest is coming in and your inner thigh muscles are coming in. So you produce this squeeze. If you get that good enough, you should be able to kind of pivot on your heel, almost to the point where you're kind of rotating right the way around. Like you should, like if you can do that, right? Where you're just focusing on inner thigh muscle squeeze and rotating of the hips to produce that circular action. If you just get that first, without breaking your center line, without feeling about going forward, just rotate whilst maintaining that sense line all part times. Yep. Don't feel so much that you're driving forward. Just feel like you're rotating first. Because what we should do is rotate, then drive forward. Whereas people drive and then rotate. And, and really you kind of get it a little bit mixed. Well, people kind of got to get that mixed up. Okay. Okay, just watch guys, watch. So I, I'll explain my whole point and then I find it easier to understand. So my idea is that inner thigh muscle squeeze, hip rotate, and you get to that point. And really my weight hasn't shifted that much forward. And then I connect that tetsui with my back leg to kind of rotate in tetsui. 
So what I end up doing, I'll show you directly to the camera. What I end up doing is, is, is from here, rotating round, so I'm facing, and then counter-rotating for the Tetsui. So I come, I come round, and then round again, in the opposite direction. Now, this is one way to do it. Of course, there are, there's another way which is just rotating round, which is just rotating round into it. That's fine too. But by just rotating round into it, the amount of speed on that impact is limited because, because it's not straight, it's circular power. And, and in order to do circular power and then stop dead, it's quite difficult. So oh, it's this, this way that I'm trying to get you to do, it's probably more challenging, but will help your karate long term. You understand? Okay, give it a go guys, try. Any questions, just ask. Yeah, too much Nick, you gotta get that balance, yeah? Don't spin out of control. Tailbone tucked in, Linda. Yeah, that was nice start, Jin. Nice start, and then just kick with that back leg as you drive into the Tetsu. Tetsu, I'm gonna blame the surface on that one. Say again? I'm gonna blame the surface on that one. Yep. Kyle. <laughs> You're tough, man. You're tough. Come on. Then Nick, Nick Bland, uh, try to keep your back straight, yeah? The more that you, the more that you kind of break that line and then add speed, you've got to just spit out of control, yeah? So take your time, get it right, but, but like above all else, keep that center line really engaged, yeah? Okay, okay, yeah, mate, guys, I'm not gonna spend long on this, but, but like one thing I would say is again that, that like it's how you approach the technique, right? And, and there's an awful lot of that sense of, of going in, right? But like I've seen, I've seen loads of teachers kind of teaching this way where you go in in or, or someone's pulling you, like the, the old, uh, like I, I have tried to attack Rue, but he's blocked my hand and grabbed hold of it uh, with both hands, and, and I'm going and he's trying to twist it. And so I'm going round in order to attack Tetsu, yeah? So he's kind of twisting and pulling my hand and I'm, I'm going round and coming round to attack Tetsu. It's kind of a nice application, yeah? I mean, it's nice. But, but the thing is, is that it, it, it gives you kind of a thought process that kind of sends you down a line that limits your ability to physically demonstrate it or to physically uh, perform the kata. And ultimately, kata is a, is a kind of, a, well, there's many things, but like it's about trying to kind of push the envelope of what's physically possible, right? Uh, um, it's many things, but one, one of those things. So if you're thinking about going forward and rotating, you already break your line. And then ultimately that breaking of your center line is going to limit how fast you can go. Whereas if you keep your back straight, concentrate on that rotation, then ultimately you can increase the speed of that rotation and then drive. So above all else, don't allow this leading thought process to pull your body forward. Understand? Good. Okay. Guys, we're on our time. Here on Yonder! Okay, no, nice relax. Here okay. on Yonder. Okay. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Ruk. Shi. Chach. Ko. Jo. Ichi. San. Shi. Go, Rokish, Ha, Kojo, Ich, Ni, Sa, Shi, Go, Rok, Shi, Ch, Ayame. Sorry, I was distracted then by Ru forgetting the kata. Okay, um, yeah, exactly, Tommy Sensei. Guys, we're not going to spend long on this one. Let's try to do uh, one point from here, one point from here, and go down. Uh, but, okay, let's take, okay, now we'll do two, two quick points. First quick point is this my getting the gas UK, yeah? This is off timing. So, one, two, three, right? Now, what I really want you to do is first of all, is make sure that this is circular. Circular in nature, circular in nature, circular in nature. Secondly, that block 
is on the hikyash. So I slow it down, I've just done the stop. I've kicked my giri as I make hikyash, this hikyash, that's when the leg blocks, that's when the, the hand blocks down. So it's this off timing. A lot of people you go kind of one, two, three. No. This one, two, three. So you're kind of driving in, and then as you come back, compress with the leg coming back, that's when the hand comes down. Understand? So make sure it's circular, circular in nature, before you do the tetsu. Oh, sorry. Here, you reckon, should I say? You reckon? And, and then make sure it's time with the hikiyash as you go forward. Okay? Try that, guys. Yeah, so Peter and uh, Gary, Richie, you're, you're both kicking, then blocking. So you're both itch knee. It's got to be, but it doesn't have to be. What I'm suggesting it could be is, is that on the return of the leg, that as the hikiyash, as your leg comes back, that's when your hand goes forward. It's probably quite difficult to see in the, the zoom, but you, you, you know what I'm saying, yeah? Uh, you see that, uh, Peter, you just kicked and then blocked. Kick block. Take your time, guys. This is a kind of a quite a difficult timing. Uh, Richard, you're doing the same thing. My my Yeah, there's no there's no my geri kikomi in Yankate. Only only kiyagi. My geri kiyagi. I'm just slowing it down so I can demonstrate the time and stopping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yame, yeah, guys, we're not going to spend forever with this because because uh, like the vast majority of you kind of a little bit need tweaking to the timing a little bit. There's a few examples in Shotkan Kata where we have off timing. And that off timing is when you're doing something, like generally speaking, it's kind of one, two, three, and you do one technique, and then you do the next technique, and then you do the next technique. Well, in this case, you're doing the technique in between, or you're starting the technique before the second, the technique before finishes. So if I think about like my geri, I'm kicking my geri, right? The my geri comes out, then it starts here, and it finishes here. Well, I, you know, I can go, I can go one, two, one, two, but I can also go one, this bit, or, or for example, a better example, one, two, you know, my geri oizuki, but I can also go one, two, feeling, and on the hikiyash, on the hikiyash, the hand comes out. It's this off timing that we use in kumite all the time. It exists in kata, we want to try to have that and, and not neglect those elements. Understand? Okay. Uh, Ah, oh, one last time. Okay, let's, let's do Hian Goran to finish. Hian Goran, yeah? The only one thing I'll just quickly say about Hian Yonda before we move on. Slow is slow. So the first movements, hand and foot the same time. Not foot, then hand. Or after the first Hiai, first Hiai, this hand and foot the same time. Not foot, then hand afterwards. Okay? But it seems Nick is not on the ground to do that sort of movement. We'll move on. Okay, here I'm gonna. Okay, oi. Okay, itch, ni, san, shi, go, ro, shi, ha, ach, ko, jo, itch, ni, san, shi, go, ro, Okay, let's, um, okay guys, can we show me from this jujuke, then hook jujuke, down, one, two. That sequence, until the first cut. Show me, let's have a look. Okay, 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 so, so guys, 
especially between the first, the Giran Jujuki and the Jordan Jujuki, there's got to be some, you've got to make it alive, right? There's got to be some, some, some sort of dynamic there. So, this, this first one, right? Um, there should be a sense that you're, you're driving in into kind of quite a long and deep stance, so like slightly deeper than normal to maybe normal. Not normal to short, but long to normal. Period, yeah? That's one point. Also, this is coming, this is going in and deep, and then you're coming into yourself. Coming in, squeezing your chest, and then coming up. So you're using that backward energy to create that jujuke. So you go driving in, you're connecting it with your back leg, you're connecting it with your back leg, and driving deep into back. That's the first dynamic, yeah? Second one, drop down. And again, you can compress. Don't, don't just do a hand movement. Do a total body action where you're compressing down on that back leg and, and, and kind of priming that back leg. Like if I'm kind of upright in my stance, I can compress more, right? Back leg becomes slightly bent. I'm not making hand knee. I'm compressing that back leg as I'm dropping my, my mass down even more with this, this block. And having my elbow to hip, elbow to hip, so, um, so that I'm not making hickey tip. And then from that compressed point, then I'm driving. I'm using that back leg to drive in Tetsu. Driving in, driving in, Oizuku. So, all of a sudden it becomes more dynamic. If you're just doing hands, it looks like this. You're going hand, 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 hand. If you're doing your body, you're driving in, coming back, dropping down, squeezing and punching. And it becomes far more dynamic in nature. Understand? Give it a go, guys. Try. Any questions, just ask. Then guys, on that Jordan, Jordan Jujuke, don't think, don't think up, think, sorry, don't think back, think, well, let me, let me try to explain this properly. A lot of you are just lifting your hands up, yeah? Think, like, this is quite a long stance. Think back compression, but you're still keeping this super engaged. A lot of people are relaxing the hip. No, you're kind of super engaged into, you're super engaged into, into, into this Giran block. Really hips engaged. Maintain that structure. Just squeeze your chest and allow your chest to come up. But still keep that structure. Then drop down. And then you've got a lot of power to drive in that Tetsui before you kind of catapult into the Oizuki. You understand? A lot of people just lifting up and it's all open. It's not open. It's still really super compressed here, yeah? Yeah, so so feel like Jim, feel like uh, you mean from from this point here, yeah? Yeah, feel like Okay, so my leg my leg is fairly straight here, right? As I make Jujuke, I'm gonna drop down and I'm gonna use every ounce of my flexibility in my ankle to compress and down. That doesn't mean I stick my bum out. I don't break my form, but I compress onto that back angle and I use it as a spring. I drop down and then I drive forward for the Tetsui than the Oizuki. So it acts like a kind of spring to drive in. Okay. Okay guys, last 30 seconds. Uh, you gotta maintain showman right the way through, Roger. So you're using a different dynamic, a different dynamic. You're not using how many showman, you're using a completely different dynamic. From that initial showman for the Jidan Jujuke, to the Jordan, to the dropping down, it's all showman. It's only then you release into the Hamni. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Okay, okay, yummy, good. So guys, just um, like one thing I'd say about that is, is, is like, 
like I can see an awful lot of people who are who are kind of breaking the line and and so like I'm saying you know you're kind of going one deep in and you you're releasing and then coming up and then you're releasing your hip back and then it's just a hand movement and then a step and it just becomes about kind of like those separate elements of your body rather than doing a total body movement so I you know I, I want you to try to feel that compression the compression that you're making here and then all you're doing is building on that compression to make good showman dash into a kind of like slightly exaggerated long stance is difficult and then you're going to release and then maintain it as you come through for the Tudor Ajora and then drop it down again and the more impact you have you can produce that that kind of Tetsuya Oizuki so one technique leads to the next technique leads to the next because you're never giving away any tension the tension is built it's built it's built and then ultimately it's released in the Tetsuya and then the Oizuki do you understand? Yes. but the moment that you release your hip the moment that you bend the moment you stick your bum out Everything's gone. Okay? Good. Okay, guys. That was a quick, quick rendition of the Hian Kata. Any questions before we finish? Pleasure, Sensei. Pleasure, Tommy. <laughs> so, oh. this general, this might annoy you, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you think, like, I'll see the Hian Katas were broken down from, like, Kankadai, yeah? Yeah. Originally, do you yes. think? They were broken down to teach us specific things as we developed through. Do you think like hey, Nina, something specific or something like that? Then, or do you think is that looking into it too much? Um, like for sure, for sure they have been. I I personally think that they were just five basic training kata, and they were just there were just five of them because and yeah, for sure, you know, Hian Shoran, you can say dominated by. Kind of good Hamni Shoman in Zenkutach. He and Nidan, good use of Kokutstach, yeah? He and Sandan, good use of Kokutstach. He and Yondan is starting to kind of morph between one stance to the other, you know, like Zenkutach, Kokutstach, Zenkutach, Kibrach, yeah? You're kind of morphing one to the other. He and Goran, you're starting to use your hips in all those three stances. So, so you can say on a, on a structural level, on a fundamental level, it's, it's teaching you three basic movements, three basic stances, and then teaching you how to shift from one stance to the other, and then trying to not only shift from one stance to the other, but also be dynamic, use your hips and everything in those stances. Yes. Now, were they designed for that, or was that meaning superimposed over years of development? I would probably argue that these meanings have been, have been kind of put onto the kata after they were made. Um, and I, th I think you could argue quite a lot about that for, for lots of different kata. Because if you look at certainly the original kata, not only Hian katas, but also the, the older kata, the, like the, the, the normal kata, then they're very vastly different from what we do, the, the Shotokanized version. So I would argue that the Shotokanized version has, it's taken a concept, a training method, and it's then kind of made it more athletic, bigger, stronger, and then, and then meaning has been superimposed onto those, those kata. And that's, I suppose, like any good, it's like a good song, right? What, a song, someone writes it and it's a song. And then someone else takes the song and then makes it into something completely different because of the way that the, the impression and the, and the meaning that they put onto the words, etc. Yeah? So, yeah, I, I, I think it's both correct, but also I wouldn't... I, the genius of, like, the founders was that they gave a system that was developed, that was possible to develop. They gave a karate do rather than an absolute karate. They gave, they gave they gave a sense of a journey that is constantly moving forward rather than an archetype that must always be followed. And so, so I think that's the genius of the founders is that is that we're constantly being able to develop our, our 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 art. It's a martial art. It's not a martial study. A martial study would have an archetype. This is how it is. This is what you do, and you must do that. And it, like everyone's trying to fo uh, follow Funakoshi Sensei from the you know the early 1900s. No, we do karate do. It's a martial art. So every generation is better than the next, better than the next. So to then to say right, our generation is practicing what the founders wanted would be would be a huge mistake. We're practicing what we've managed to develop because of the founding fathers and mothers, founders, mothers and fathers. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, fit together, hands by side. Let's go.